All right, so next talk is Max talking about CrateDB. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming to my talk. My name is Max, as you already know, and I'm a software engineer at Crate.io. And while you m might have not heard about CrateDB yet, I want to tell you a bit more about CrateDB. Um, CrateDB is an open source distributed database, and it's kind of special because it's built on top of Elasticsearch and Lucene. And some of you might wonder, why would you even do that? Does, it, does that even work? And I can give you already a hint. Uh, it works like a charm. And, but let's see uh, why and, and how it works. So um, why are we talking about um, another database? Um, so you, you are very, you're all very familiar with traditional databases, SQL databases. It's, they're very well researched, very well executed. There's open source databases like Postgres, MySQL. And of course, there are also commercial closed ones, or like Oracle. Um, but typically, what you experience when you run these um, on a large scale is that to, to be able to have scalable search is, can be quite tricky uh, with these, although they are also making progress in that direction, for sure. So on the other side, there are search engines, which are uh, well kind of like databases, but they're um, optimized for search and scale. So we have um, libraries like um, Lucene uh, for, um, for very efficient uh, s um, searching, local searching of documents. And we have the distributed um, frameworks like Solar and Elasticsearch, which, which used uh, Lucene to, to have distributed search capability. But um, the downside is um, you can typically use SQL with these search engine. And um, one might actually ask, why? Because um, SQL is a pretty mature standard. It's been around since the 80s. Everybody knows SQL. I mean, at least maybe the kids nowadays not anymore, but I know SQL pretty well. And it's, it, it, it's pretty, it makes sense. So why, why drop that? And that's where CrateDB comes. So CrateDB is a scalable SQL database and it's optimized for search, but it doesn't have all that no SQL bullshit. That's a very broad, that's a very broad statement. And, but basically what you see in CrateDB that there are no funny APIs like you have in other data, um, scalable databases, distributed databases. Um, it's very easy to configure and it actually works. Um, it's, it's, it's built with um, tools which have proven to, to work in production and it's not like uh, another NoSQL database, I don't want to say any names, which uh, in production breaks completely. So CrateDB in a nutshell, it's a product around since 2014. And uh, the GitHub address is here, create, create on GitHub. It's Apache 2.0 license in the community edition. And um, so it is built using Elasticsearch we've seen. As I, as I told you that already, we we'll see a bit more in detail uh, what that means. Uh, it's SQL 99 compatible, which sounds like really outdated, but it's probably all the SQL you will ever use. And it has um, uh, various ways of connecting with it. So it has like a REST and Postgres interface. So Postgres means that you can actually use the Postgres client and the Postgres protocol. So if you have existing infrastructure that connects with Postgres, you can pretty much just plug in CreateDB and it has like a REST interface, of course, um, but it, it only accepts SQL statements. So, because I want to be honest, because I might make this broad statement, I want to um, uh, tell you, I mean, what CreateDB is really useful for. So I said it's easy to set up, it doesn't have funny APIs. It has great scale out, massive reads and writes. It is container aware, which now these days is, is really important. It's not so great um, if you want to use transactions, because it doesn't support transaction, or stuff like foreign keys. So, sorry? Who wouldn't want that yet? Um, yeah, we're talking about scalable search. So what is it like to use CrateDB then? Um, so in a way, CrateDB is just like a, like a normal SQL database. So we can, we can use SQL statements, create a table, custom speakers. We can use primary keys. Uh, we have, of course, data types, integers, string. 
Um, and then if we have like a speakers table and a talks table, uh, we can of course insert data in these two tables. And um, then for example, like you, I would in a typical relational database, uh, do a join on left join on the talks tables and join in all the all the speakers on the speaker ID But there's more I mean you already know that from uh, typical relational databases that if you want uh, scalable um, High performance you usually denormalize your schema and that is what a lot of people do as well uh, in, when they use CrayTB so we can we can have retain the same information as in the previous slide with the two tables have just one speaker table and have the speaker name and um, an object column with like title and string uh, with the title a string and abstract a string and um, yeah inserting data works like this and the the beautiful thing is that you can just select uh, from these objects so talk is our column and title is our um, um, field inside that column you can just select from it and it's not it looks like an expensive operation It's not it's 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 the same as having another column and This has to do with how Creative B actually realizes these tables and um, That we use Lucene under under the hood. Uh, I will get back to that in a second so bottom line is uh, Creative B is also very great if you have unstructured data like this um, because you can pretty much just ingest it in this way. It's very flexible. So, um, when you create a table, because we're a distributed database, you can, if you have a four node cluster, for instance, you can um, specify additionally a clustering scheme. So, you can cluster uh, by four shards. So, that means that this table you are creating, the speaker's table, will be split into four parts, which we call shards, you might recognize this term from other, uh, like Elast from Elasticsearch for instance, and um, then your data will be, um, all the names which have the same name will be on the same node, but um, there's hashing involved, so your data will be um, evenly partitioned among the nodes. And of course, we also support replication. So that is that you specify with this with number of replicas. The, the good thing about replication is, of course, uh, it makes it, I mean, here, of course, the replicas are not in the same node. They, they will be uh, arranged that they, if one node fails, then you can recover from another replica of another node. Um, but the, the cool thing about replicas is not only that they provide fault tolerance, but also they, you can actually um, increase your search speed because you have the data, um, if you, you have the data available in multiple places. So I hope that makes sense. What additionally you can do in CreateDB, which is really neat, for instance, for um, time series data, is you can co-locate co your data further. And that is called a partition table. So if you have this table here, like we had before, and you might have like a, a year because every year is FOSTEM, um, you, you, might have, you, you spread your data into shards with, with this clustered by, but you can additionally partition your table. So you can specify one or multiple columns, and that means that for, for every year, you will, you will, so here we have three years because we have three um, um, parts, like three partitions for our uh, table but you, you can have as many as you want. And so every time we have a new value, a new year coming, you create uh, another um, uh, primary and uh, replica shard for the table. This is what we call a partition table. And there's more. There are, of course, all kinds of aggregations. There's GeoSearch, so you, you have a geodata type for your columns and you, you can um, search by distance or um, use other geometric uh, methods. There are text analyzers. So if you have, a, like columns are by default indexed always in CreateDB, but if you have some uh, more sophisticated, like full text search or stemming uh, on, on your string in your column, you can, you can use one of the built-in uh, analyzers or even write your own. 
to do that and to do uh, effi eff efficiently search uh, for something, some value in a, in a column. Uh, we have user-defined user functions, uh, snapshots to back up your data or restore your data, uh, user management, schema privileges, uh, encryption, MQTT support, and so on. But I cannot go into this into detail, of course. Um, but what is more important now is to look a bit um, how these features are realized in CreateDB. So look a bit at the architecture. Thank you. We are, of course, um, like a lot of projects nowadays, on the shoulder of giants. So we are a distributed SQL execution engine, but we have a, a, like, a large number of important dependencies. These, these are like the, the most important, I would say. So we use a antler that's a, like a parser generator to, to parse our statement, to generate an abstract syntax tree. We have um, Netty for all communication, for our um, REST interface, Postgres, and web interface. We have Lucene, which is storage, indexing, and our internal query format that we generate from the SQL query. And we have Elasticsearch, as I mentioned, for the transport, clustering, routing. So this, this lets us concentrate on, on the upper uh, SQL execution part, which is really nice. So I'm not sure who of you uh, used Lucene before. Yeah, some people. Okay, um, so a very basic introduction to Lucene. So Lucene stores documents, and these documents in CreateDB could be, I mean, is, the, is what is our row data, pretty much. This is how our rows are translated into documents. But it's completely transparent, and you will never know that actually happens, but we wanted to learn more, so I'm telling this to you, uh, this to you now. And um, these documents have fields, so, for instance, uh, we always have this underscore ID field, which is like um, an identifier for, for um, the document in, on our node, in our shard. And we have, if we have a column, then there you will have uh, um, these here listed. And um, as I mentioned, these fields are indexed by default. So if you want to find Bob, you can do that very efficiently. You don't need to create an index. It's, it's, it's tunable, you can, you can turn it off if you want, but the default it's on. And um, we have also, due to Lucene, a column store integrated. So if you have uh, a, a column that you want to aggregate, sum up some, some numbers uh, in like uh, a revenue col column, whatever, you can do that very, very, very efficiently due to the column storage because you can just aggregate the whole column. You don't have to go through each row and find the value. Elasticsearch. Um, who has worked with Elasticsearch? Okay, it's about the same amount of people, but different people than Lucene. Uh, so um, so um, in Elasticsearch, you have these core concepts that revolve about in, in, in indices, shards, and replicas. There was a really good talk yesterday from one of the Elastic guys, um, which also explained that. But let's just quickly go over it. So. Um, we have these shards in an index, like I mentioned before, and um, each shard has uh, replicas, of course, and um, these replicas are yeah, also useful for search performance. I already said that. So how do tables relate to indices and shards in CreateDB? So a CreateDB table is always represented by at least one Elasticsearch index with a mapping. If it's not partitioned, then it's just one. Um, index and um, each index in Elasticsearch has has a mapping which kind of looks like this. Uh, well, it's actually it looks like this. I copied this uh, from the source. So um, if you have um, our table with our um, speakers, um, you have uh, for every you have you have for every um, column you have the name and some attributes like keyword is is like a simple string. And um, so, and yeah, you, you can have nested um, properties as well, which was our like objects that we saw previously. So, if you have a normal table like T1, which just which is not partitioned, you um, you have an index for this table called T1, and it might have like sh four shards that we saw before. 
you might have see like another table which has three shards. Th these are not the same, same sh shards, just uh, means like it has four shards. And um, then you have a table T2, which is partitioned. So, and uh, we create these partitions. If you, well, here's day, but before we had year. So if you have um, a, a new value for, um, for your um, year, and you, you are partitioned by year, thank you, then um, you, you will basically create a new index for every, for every year or every day. And um, yeah, this is quite handy if you, if you want to perform um, data exclusively on, on a year or ba day basis like you would uh, in time series analysis. So how does this all come together? So when we have a SQL query, it, it will first um, go through one of our clients uh, or submitted by one of our clients, which can be our web interface or um, psql, crash is our command line uh, utility, and JDBC, Python, whatever. And uh, then it arrives on one of the nodes. And it doesn't matter which node, you can just pick any one. And um, yeah, depending on whether you use REST or Postgres, we will, we will receive your statement. Then it goes into the parser. So this is, this is like all built on top uh, of these other layers I mentioned. So parser, yeah, makes sense of a SQL statement, um, like syntactically. And then the analyzer does the semantic analysis and um, gets all the relational information, looks up the, for example, the Elasticsearch indices and does, um, yeah, basically a semantic check. And the planner, it then generates the execution plan. So uh, it figures out um, what, what nodes are going to be involved and then uh, the executor will, will use like the Elasticsearch transport uh, layer here and um, submit the data to all, to all the involved nodes. And the nodes itself, of course, they have, they have their own execution logic again and uh, this all gets uh, submitted in the end back to the, well, looked up on the storage layer, the data that is necessary, and then it's go gonna be sent back, merged. There can be multiple phases involved depending on, on the SQL statements. If you have like a subquery that you might first do some, uh, some other operation before you do the final operation. So what is some highlights from this architecture? Um, you have distributed storage, distributed execution, you are masterless, which doesn't mean there's not, not, not a master. There's always one master to coordinate, but any node can potentially be the master. So if the master fails, another one takes over. Um, we have obviously replication, which is really neat. We don't depend on any like storage system. Um, we use only local storage. So if you, if you use containers and you want to uh, um, shut down a container, bring another one up, you can totally do that without um, worrying about data persistence if you, of course, if you have replication turned on. And it's, it's highly optimized for search um, with Lucene indexing all the tables by default. So I wanted to do a bit more hands-on. I realized I probably don't have so much time. Um, so what, what can you do with CreateDB? Obviously, monitoring is a big thing where you receive sensor data, IoT data, uh, large amounts of data or network events and you want to make sense of this data in real time, which you do when you do monitoring or intrusion detection or something like that. Then some people use it for stream analysis. Okay, it's not like streaming, streaming like uh, in the sense of um, Apache Flink, for example, uh, but but you, you, can you, can, you can ingest data and raw data and then perform like at very short intervals uh, aggregations on this data. So it is a streaming like functionality which a lot of people use. Then of course text search, obviously because we have the analyzers in the scene, uh, it's very uh, often used. Time series I mentioned with the partitions and you spatial queries are also um, very often used. So how does it look like? Um, so this is the admin uh, interface. So you have like a very uh, good overview of your cluster here. Uh, it's a general overview page where you can see is everything like replicated. Um, 
how much records we have, and uh, some, some basic load information. And we also made that like C group aware so you, you can use also this load information in a, a container environment. Then we have a couple of more pages here. Our time's up. I thought I had 25. Five, okay. Five okay, okay. I'm, I'm done, basically. So you, you have your tables here. You can see how many shards, partitions you have. And uh, note, note information. We have some sharding information also to see where, where, where which shard is currently in replica. Okay, so I mean, the bottom line is Elasticsearch um, used Lucene heavily and Netty among others. And we used Elasticsearch Lucene and, and a bunch of other stuff to build a distributed SQL database on top of it. I think CreateDB is really perfect when you want or have to use SQL. And um, if you want to store a large amount of structured or unstructured data, and have many thousand queries uh, a second. Um, so I, I would invite you to try it out for yourself. You can go on the download side or use this fancy curl command if you trust us. And um, docker run create is also a possibility. Uh, you can check out the docs. And yeah, if you want to contribute, there's some information how to contribute and stack overflow. And yeah, we have a Slack channel as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Max. Any questions? Uh, do you use uh, parent-child relations in Elasticsearch? Parent -child, if we use parent-child relations? From Elasticsearch. I, I'm not aware that we use that. So all the relations are built on top of Elasticsearch? Yes. We have our own relationship, okay. relation management. Do you have any performance numbers or... I, I explicitly didn't go into performance because, or benchmarking because this is a sense, like a difficult topic. On our website, we have some benchmark results if you want to check it out. But uh, like in the Elastic talk, benchmarks are always uh, subjective, I would say. So it's very fast. Depends on use case. If, you, if you're joining like, relation, like relations all the time, it's going to be uh, a bit slower. If you have demonized schema like this, like I showed it, it's going to be very fast. So, yeah. Because I know that Elastic, Elastic is switching away from the parent-child relations because of the performance issues among others. But mm -hmm. that was the main goal <coughs> of dropping type support and mm -hmm. not using the relations at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so th they wanted to switch away from the relation uh, databases, uh, mm -hmm. schemas, and everything because people uh, mistakenly took it for, for some relational databases and mm -hmm. tried to do joins, which is impossible on those data structures to perform good. So mm -hmm. I was wondering how, how you resolved that. So, okay. Yeah. Joins are not impossible, but. Uh, yeah, I agree. Hi, thank you for your talk. Uh, I just want to ask, uh, have you considered the Sphinx uh, w before you started the CreateDB? Because Sphinx is out there for a decade and uh, has uh, all functionality CreateDB have. I, so you are, you're asking if I know th things? Uh, do you, have you considered uh, I, I, Sphinx? I don't know what, what, what that is, actually. Oh, OK. So, so okay. I guess I've not considered it. Sorry. So you used a PostgreSQL wire protocol. What, um, how consistent would your SQL dialect be with the Postgres SQL dialect? And what uh, would it be considered a bug if there was a significant difference? In our code base, we have uh, the SQL logic tests, which um, help us to keep track exactly how much we cover from the SQL dialect. I mentioned no support for transactions, so obviously uh, we, we won't match 100%. But we have a lot of people who, who plug CreateDB in instead of Postgres, and it, and it worked. So we have information schema and all this stuff you would expect from Postgres. It, I cannot give you all the details. Um, it depends, but I would say it's it's pretty pretty good coverage for most use cases. 
Okay, that's all we have time for. Thank you, Max. Thank you.